Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today I want to talk about blade center. I have a blade center down here, mm, it's just below the screen and why is that smart? Why, are, why don't just buy a lot of servers like this? Well, we're gonna look into that and I'm, we're gonna take some of the blades out and see what they look like inside. Blade sender, let's go into it and see what it's all about. This is a blade sender. This is an IBM blade sender. It has room for 14 blade servers. And each of these are a, are a blade server. It's an independent server, but it has some shared facilities together with the other blades in the blade center. Over here at the very end, the blade center has some common stuff. It has a couple of USB ports, it has a CD-ROM drive, and it has some light diodes to show different stuff. Behind the, the covers here are some very powerful power supplies, and these can be changed while the blade center is running. You can switch these out. Let's just take one out. And, yeah. Big, big power supply. I think this is about, was, this is 2880 watts. So a very big power supply. Let's put that back in. This means that if, if there's a faulty power supply, there's two of them here and there is two down here. So there is a redundancy of four power supplies. The blades themselves can be bought individually. Uh, often you get the best price if you buy the blade center and a lot of blades at the same time. But these can be bought one at a time. And inside it's, it's more or less a regular server. This one, which is an, this is an HS21. It has two processors. It has four slots for RAM, it has room for two hard drives, and it has some expansion cards over here. You can plug in a number of different cards down here in this slot. The blades come in different models. I have like three different models. I have the HS21, HS22, and an LS21. And these are comes with uh, AMD processor, AMD Optron processors. I think we're going to take one of each and see what's inside. But let's go around the back and see what the blade center looks like from the back. Here we are on the back and this is not easy because there is cables everywhere. But the blade center comes with expansions like these. These are some cartridges that you can take in and out and these are switches. Four port gigabit switches with some management, extra management ports. Over in this side, there is some management cards. Can we get in there? The one with the VGA connection, that's a management card. And that's, that's the card that manages the whole. And when you're running 14 servers, you want some redundancy. So right down here, there is a management card more. So there's one there and there's one there. In this side there is also a, sh a switch right here and there is a switch right down here. It comes with two big fan blowers, really big and powerful ones and they're also mounted here on the back and also there is two expansion slots, a number of different things that can go into these slots. So that was kind of a short over the back side. The blade center takes up only 9 U's in the rack and that's for 14 servers. In comparison, I have 9 servers up here. Normal 2U servers, IBM X3650 and that takes up 18 U's of server room. And I could have those down here and they would fill up the, the blade center to there. And they could all be there and take up half the space. So I could have more or less three times the amount of servers in the same rack space. Here we have the HS21 again. Let's just go in and have a, have a little closer look at it. Um, 
on this side there's a big drawing that tells you what everything is and how to put in an expansion card, how to mount the hard drives, how to put on an blade expansion option. You have the option of taking off the lead to this thing and put on an extra RAM bay. So you can put in a lot of extra RAM in a server like this. There is an explanation of what's on the system board right there. Microprocessor options, which, pro which processors can you put in. Uh, oh, it doesn't really say that, but it says how to do it. Let's turn this around. And on the other side, uh, you can actually write something on this. If you have a marker, you can you can write down what server this is and stuff like that. It's on the newer server. They have they've had this so that you can write it on the front. Uh, it would be a stick out card. But on these models, it's you have to pull out the server to see what what it is. Here is the lead again. And there is the two processors here, and they are really easy removable with a couple of screws. There is four bays for RAM. This is an older server, so it doesn't take that much RAM. These are four gigabyte blocks, and I think it's about that's about as much as this one can take without the expansion card installed. And I, I haven't got any of those expansion cards, so that was the. RAM and there is there are numbered one two three four and have to be put in in a specific order. Over here is a little bias battery protected by a little cover. And can we go in and see that? Here is a little protected thing and that's for the expansion card if you choose to get that and install an additional amount of RAM. That also means that blade server will take up twice as much room in the blade center. Over here we have the hard drive and these are very easily removable and it's, an, it's a normal two and a half inches uh, SATA drive, 15,000 RPMs and this one is only 73.4 gigabytes which is a pretty normal SATA standard. So. Let's put that back in, like that, and there is room for another one and there is just a plastic cover to, to make sure the airflow is the right. Underneath that there is the graphics card in the, in the blade server right there. And over here that's the network, the network chip right there. And here is an expansion card, and we'll see an expansion card, an example of an expansion card when we get into the AMD servers because they actually have an expansion card installed. So that's kind of what's inside this server. These servers have some really big benefits because they're very cheap. You can get these servers on eBay for very, very low amount of money because there's not really a market for them. These are only used in professional applications and when the big company says oh we can make, we can save money by changing out our old blades and getting new ones they can't really sell these to anyone so it's very normal to just give them away or get a little amount of money and in no time they will be on sale on eBay for very small amount of money there is like an a little, oops, get rid of that one. A little thing in here so that you can see if the if the server has had any errors. You can press the button and see. Oh, the IMM or whatever had an error. So it's kind of for fault to find an error. If when you pull this server out, you can't really see what, what was wrong with it if there is something wrong. These servers, now that they are very close, in a very close enclosure in the blade center, they have a, have a tendency to become hot. There can be problems getting enough airflow to them. So these hard drives, very often, they, they will fail after some time. And also memory errors has been seen from time to time. 
So, but let's close this one and take a look at the next one. Here is the next one, and it's the AMD server, and it has exactly the same thing. Uh, not much has changed. There's a little with the drawing here because the AMD it actually has room for more memory dims. There is eight dims in this one, or room for eight dims, and there are still two processors, but they are placed a little differently. Now the one processor is here and one is over here. So they've chosen in a different way, but otherwise it's the same thing. There are some late expansion options, there are some memory configuration options, there are some I.O. expansion options, processor options and system board. And then there is different parts down here if you want to exchange something. So let's go into it and see what we got. And these would be extremely cheap on eBay as well. Here we have the expansion card, an I.O. expansion card, and this one is an HBA. Uh, this server has no hard drive. It has only one Bay 4 hard drive, but it's actually configured to boot on this one. So it will be presented an iSCSI disk somewhere on something, like an iSCSI SAN, like this is an iSCSI SAN, and it would be possible to present the blade server with a with a boot disk up there and this card would be able to do that and here is the the eight memory slots right there there are two processors right there and here is the expansion card uh, or the plug for the expansion card right there and i think this one is also for that this server has the same option of you can press this and it will tell you if there was some kind of error on the server. And a very neat little trick to use that. Uh, also on the front of the server there is this little letter. And in there there's a couple of buttons. You can press those and there is a power on button and there's some light diodes that tells you how is this server doing and there's the serial number actually it's a good thing to know that the serial number is behind this little LED so you don't need to take out the, the blade server to see the serial number it's right there this is an AMD one I have seen these really cheap on eBay under a under hundred dollars for a fully working server with good amount of RAM this one hasn't got a good amount of RAM it's only installed with 4 gigabytes of RAM so that's that's not a lot let's go on to the last one this is an 8s22 and it's the newest server that I currently have my hands on it has the same drawing here uh, or kind of it's a little less amount of things there is the control panel blade handles uh, which is about taking things out. I don't know why that is in there. They might have had some problems with people not being able to figure that out. There is something with the processors and memory and there is an order of how to put in the memory correctly. Over here there's the system board that explains everything and this little thing inside is the light panel diagnostics they call it and there's an explanation of what the different light diodes is showing and it's a very good thing that you can read that right on the cover. Bit stupid that it's on the back of the server. It would be smarter if it was the LED that opened up. And there are some I.O. expansion options and that was like the HPA. And here is the server. Let's open up and see what's inside. This server has 12 slots for memory. Uh, a thing to be aware of on these plate servers is that the, the memory blocks are very, they're like low low form factor which is very important because you can't fit you cannot fit a real a normal memory block into this server you could in the first server the HS21 those were normal memory slots that went in there but this one and the AMD these were is only half size memory blocks and again over here we have the bias battery right there it 
on old servers like this, they tend to fail three, four years old. It's a good, a good idea to start changing the batteries. The server has two, two processors again, and it has two hard drives. And now they've become a little bit smarter. Now it's actually possible to exchange the hard drives without downing the server and without turning it off. Now they, can, they just pop out the front which is pretty cool. Also, this server has the option of booting on a USB stick. So you can put a USB stick in here and you can boot from that instead of using the hard drives. There is a new, the expansion slots looks a little different. To put that on there, I have no idea how that looks like. I haven't got any. The IMM is over here. The diagnostics thing. There's a lot of heat sinks in this model, so it's a bit hard to see some of this. I guess it's the graphics card, and one of them might be the probably the network adapter and stuff like that. But well, this is a really cool server. You can actually put in a, a couple of really good CPUs. This server takes the the Xeon X55 and I think 56 series you can actually have a really powerful server in one of these yeah a blade center like this is a really great option to get into servers and if you you can like expand it the blade center itself um, often the biggest expense will be the shipping the blade center itself is rather cheap it's, I'll try and find an eBay price and list it down here it's not much uh, the blades themselves are not very expensive and sometimes you can get an entire blade sander for only a few thousand dollars which is really cheap for 14 servers you can beat that these would be more expensive this is a really good option and you save a lot on the networking as well they, they come with a little switch and there are like four uplink ports and you can put those up into your infrastructure or what have you. A blade sender is a great option to start a company with because you can start with a couple of servers and you can build on it. 14 servers is a lot for even a medium sized company and if you're just playing at home it might be overkill but if you want to have your own data center like I have it's a good place to start. So thank you for watching my video. Remember the, the like button down here if you forgot guess it's still there. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and have a really nice day. Bye bye.